will come to Atlantic and it's on the goal lining as usual. This is a quick um, increase review, okay? And then yesterday I get some emails about that. So the time for this class is 6.30, 9.30. Um, where to register is over there. It's adaptingclassreview.com live for crash course. So that's where you can find me. If this is the course we'll be, we'll be covering, okay? So that's the price. Um, if you need help, you can let me know. Then they say, the plan payment that you can you can sign up for. So that's the information. So I see you just a very quick um, review on the go. It's just straightforward information, right? It's a case study. Um, let's try some case study. So we have a, a 10 year old, okay, um, 10 year old boy um, in the emergency room. The mommy brought the kid to the emergency room. These are the symptoms or chief complaint, right? The kid said um, he's unable to open the jaw. That's one. That's one symptom he's complaining about. Number one. And he has a low grade fever. And it sounds like an hot potato, right? That means he has a muffled sound, voice, or basically. Does that give you a clue? This information, does it give you any clue that you should, you can figure out the diagnosis? Well, what else do you want you need to be able to make a diagnosis? This is how you do case studies. You don't need any more. This is what I call these are the buzzwords. The buzzwords for that diagnosis. This three sentence is called buzzwords, right? Those are buzzwords. Right. It should give you some idea of what you should worry about. Right? So well, do you need any more information? Well, the mommy said, um, mother, she said, what did she say? And a kid had a sore throat one week ago. And he just he feel like he went away. I mean, but nothing was done um, about it. What do you think? Based on that additional information I provided, 10-year-old boy in the emergency room, unable to open the jaw, low-grade fever, and an all potato muffled voice. The mother said the kid has sore throat um, one week ago, right? Sore throat one week ago. Does this help you make a diagnosis? If it doesn't, I will give you more information. I think so. These are the things um, you don't have the case study, know everything. They put a bunch of garbage in it to distract you. This is what you should be put, putting your focus on when you're doing this case based on your content. You have to master your content. I don't know where you get it from, but wherever you get it from, making sure that you give you enough information to answer this question. You know, you. Keywords I've provided, jaw, unable to open the jaw, low-grade fever, and a muffled voice, and a kid has sore throat, right, one week ago. So if that's not enough for you, the nurse decided to do examination. And so this is the nurse doing examination. So examination by the nurse. 
And this is the next note. This is the note. She says she has a Christmas. The kid has Christmas, right? She saw a Christmas and talk about the Mapo boys. Right. And then she documented um, um some basically swelling on the left side of the of the cheek. So they swelling there. This is what she document. Does that give you information? This is I've given you provided enough. So this is the next note. And then she went ahead and get a, new, a bunch of history, more history, right? She get more history in addition. If you can figure out the diagnosis, the kid vaccination is up to date. No surgeries before, no other medical history. Does this information give you an idea about what is going on? 10 year old, chief complaint, unable to open the jaw, low grade fever, or potato, basically muffled voice. The mother said the kid has sore throat one week ago and it went away. And then when the nurse examined the kid, she saw some Christmas muffled voice, left side of the cheek is swollen. And she found out um, the vaccination is up to date, right? It's up to date. Vaccination is up to date. And there's no any other history about it. What do you think is going on with this kid? Can you figure out the diagnosis? And if you can figure out what is helping you, I've given you the buzzwords and I will show you. This is a bias with output there, mapo voice, right? And this one, unable to open the mouth is this definition of Christmas. That's what it is. So that's Christmas for that patient. And then this should give you a clue. So what do you think is going on? What is your differential and what is your diagnosis? If you know your diagnosis, You'll be able to make the so they're not in the next since nobody was able to um I give you more information. The next when I had and do more exams and the kid is drilling, right? Um he's drilling a lot. He's drilling a lot. So what do you think is going on? Now she does not like it. That's not like it at all. It's just a what is going on. I got to do something, right? I need to come up with something. 10-year-old, unable to open the jaw, low-grade fever, out with the room, up with voice. And then one week ago, at sore throat, examination shows Christmas, mouth of voice, and then on the right side, on one side, the cheek um, is swollen. Vaccination is up to date and no surgery, no other medical history, and the kid is drilling. What do you think is going on? Diagnosis. Diagnosis. Diagnosis, guys. This is adapting class. If this is the first time you hear my voice, I'm adapting class. And I hope you're learning something today. This is how you do case study. Focus on the buzzwords. I've given you a bunch of buzzwords, and I want you to make a diagnosis. Don't jump the gun. Put things together. Put everything together that I've given you. I've given you the buzz. If I'm doing this case, and they give me this, this is what I'm looking for in the case. And out of this, I can make a diagnosis so easily because I have a, I can't open my mouth. I have Christmas, right? I'm drilling, right? I have sore throat a week ago, and my one side of my cheek is swollen. Hey, I'm in trouble. I see a bunch of diagnoses. I see epiglottitis is winning. Kawasaki. I see mumps. Um, and 
those are the so far what I've seen, right? I see a bunch of diagnoses. So let me write your diagnosis here. You say epiglottitis, so epi epiglottitis, right? I see mumps. I see, what do I see? Um, I see fatness. What do I see? Some croup. Yeah, so this is what everybody think you see. And I see, keep on hearing the baby is drooling, so it's epiglottitis. Um, anybody else? 10 year old boy unable to open the jaw, low grade fever, odd potato, muffled voice, sore throat, examined by the nurse, there's trismus, muffled voice, left side of the cheek is swollen, vaccination is up to date. This is what I call about concept. You know, so concept is the key with case study. You don't just pick one word and just jump on it. I don't know. There's videos out there that tells you to do that. I see this. This is what it is. Totality of the case. Think broadly, right? And we will put it together. I can tell you, based on this history, it's not epigrotitis. It's not mumps. It's not this, tightness. It's not crop. Because all of them as keywords, you know, like croup, you're talking about backing, you know, epigrotitis. The reason why it cannot be epigrotitis is because of this, guys. Vaccination is up to date. You don't jump the gun. Don't think because the kid is drooling. I put it there to trap you. This is my trap. This is my trap because... I put what? Vaccination up to date. That means the kid may have what? Epigrotitis. He cannot have epigrotitis. He's been vaccinated. He's 10 year old. He cannot be epigrotitis because of this. Christmas. He cannot be epigrotitis. Because in epigrotitis patient, their mouth will be wide open. That is why they draw. They open their mouth widely and they, so that they don't aspirate and let themselves drill so that it can help them. It cannot be that. It cannot be mumps, right? Because mumps are usually common in older patients um, or kids who are a little bit older. But even that, I've told you, this kid has already has vaccination. The fact that he cannot open his mouth. And another key is up to potato mouth or voice. Right, the muffled voice usually defeat the purpose of that. This is test taking strategy and adapt endless way, right? And then another one is sore throat. He had sore throat. Don't ignore this. The fact that he has sore throat, epigrotitis is hallway emergency. You cannot have sore throat and then recover from it and then come back and develop epigrotitis. If this is what happened, he will be dead. So it cannot be epigrotitis. So I know everybody chooses it because I see a bunch of answers say, hey, the kill is drilling. Drilling is not classic for epigrotitis. Today, if you hear my voice, this is adapting class. I'm telling you, clinical implication, your board knows that. Drilling, it's not just classic for epigrotitis. It's designed for patients who have having airway issue, and because of that, they open their mouth, and then they, they salivate. It's just excessive salivation to allow it to go away. So it cannot be epigrotitis. I will have told you the kid may be in tripod position, but that's still not, it's for anybody in Iowa. Anyway, the fact that this kid has vaccination ruler, the fact that this kid has left-sided cheek is swollen. 
right? So this is what we call what? Muffle ad sound, which is Christmas, hot potato sound, sore throat. This guy kid has tonsil problem. Tonsil, tonsil, tonsula abscess. Okay, he has tonsillitis one week ago. Now he has developed an abscess. An abscess, that's why his right left side of his cheek is swollen. If you look at the back and you see the uvula and you see the tonsil sitting here like that, red, the uvula will be running away from what? The tonsil, it will be pointing this way. The uvula is deviation away because the tonsil is inflamed. This is tonsillar abscess. If you've never heard it before, this is one of the important uh, um, respiratory problems for kids. It's classic that your board can give it to you. Uh, and everybody is going to choose epigrotitis for that case because they can confuse you easily, but they have to give you enough information, which I give you as the first three sentences. If you're taking a test and you're reading case study, the first three sentences, watch for them. There's buzzwords, them. I call them buzzwords. If you don't know what they, they are, check Adapt and Chris. You see um, or subscribe to our channel. If you want, that's fine. But you will know what are buzzwords for each case. You see, said, if I hear this, this is what it is. Not just one word. I give you unable to open the mouth, which is Christmas, right? He has odd potato voice. That's mouth of sound. And he has sore throat a week ago. Tonsillar abscess. Now that you know, what do you want to do now? Which of this is indicated now? Now I've given you the diagnosis. Which of this is indicated? You know it's an airway emergency, right? So it's an emergency. We got to fix this kid. Otherwise, we have, a, we, have, we have a problem. So I'll give you indicated. Which of this is indicated? So which of this is indicated? Number one, what do you think? Um, IV antibiotic. All right, section K. Emergency intubation kit. Corticosteroid. Prepare for surgery. Abodoro. Neb. You have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that puts you indicated or not indicated. Like that. That's all. So which of this? I'll just clean this, guys. So which one is indicated? You know what is the problem? It's a tonsillar problem. So which one is indicated? You cannot just select, you cannot over select this kind of question. You got to select one each in each row, but you got to base on the diagnosis. It's a tonsillar abscess, right? When I talk, I never mention anything about the actual airway. And so there is different kind of airway. There's the upper airway, and then there's the lower portion of the airway, right? This is the upper portion of the airway. This does not do well with abodoro. Abodoro opens this lower portion, like asthma patient. 
Therefore, this is not indicated. Abudra is not indicated. We know it's an abscess, right? You can know that this is indicated. Well, he's drilling and he's not epicleotitis. Therefore, we can suction him. He may have uh, some emergency for intubation, right? And we can give him steroid to decrease the inflammation. The treatment for tonsillar abscess is surgery. So we got to IND. So that is what this is what it will look like. Antibiotic, have the suction available, and prepare to intubate this kid, give them some steroid to lower it, and then prepare for surgery. But he does not need a bureau. These are the things you have to know, right? And the surgery is incision and drainage, right? Incision and drainage of the abscess. That's so. all. And this kid goes on after that. So these are the things you, you have to know about this case, straightforward penicillin abscess, right? So now the kid went home, he came back four weeks later. Right. He went he went back. No, he came came back one week later. One week later, what is happening? He's having some jerky movement, right? Jerky movement. Um, and when you listen to him, there's like a, a friction rub when you listen to the heart. Okay. You complain about knee pain. And he has a rash. on his leg, still some low grade fever, right? So what has gone on? Then the nurse investigate and they said, well, what is going on? Well, and the mommy said, well, we did not take the antibiotic. Again, after the drainage, we thought it was drainage. It was drained, so we did not take the antibody. And so that's what happened. Hey, so what do you think has happened to the kid now? It's one week later, I never took the antibiotic. He's having some jerky movement. There's the friction rub when you listen to the um to the heart, basically. Listening to the heart. This is listening. Heart sound. When you listen, um, there's a friction rub. He has a knee pain. And this is one week ago, jerky movement. And he has some rash with a low grade fever. What has happened to the kid? What has happened to the kid? We did not take the antibiotic because we thought we already had incision and drainage. What is the point of antibiotic? So, what is your diagnosis right now? I'm teaching you how to do. Password. If you sign up for the course, this is what you see. I will show you when you read the case, you'll be able to figure out like, oh, this is what is going on. These are the concepts you have to focus on. And then all those people will be taking the course. I mean, and most of them like 85 and they're out. with a surprise. But this is the, you see passwords I've given you? One, two, three, four, five. Right there. You can figure out what has happened to this kid. Now he's having jerky movement, uh, friction rub, knee pain, erythematous rash, low grade fever. There's a key concept I've given you. Remember this kid had some sore throat. One week later, he came with tonsillar abscess. He was drained, given antibiotic, and what, he never took it. Now he's having some jerky movement, friction rub, knee pain, erythematous, and low grade fever. This, I call it. And this medicine, we'll call it, the kid has developed rheumatic, okay, acute rheumatic fever.
So that's what has happened. He has developed developed this rash. Erythematous margenitin, right? Low grade fever. This is an antibody reaction. The knee pain is maggotry infunction, and the friction rub is what? What is the meaning of the friction rub? This is concept, and like I say, I always like to let you think, guys think. I don't give you just information. What is the friction rub is? What which clinical finding is this? Friction rub. What is that? Why is the kid having a friction rub? And what does that mean? What does friction rub mean? This is key, right? What is this? This is key. Friction rub. Who knows that? Who knows what the friction rub is? Why do we have a sound called friction rub? And what does that indicate? What does that friction rub indicate? This indicates pericarditis. And when you get an EKG, looking for diffused ST elevation or prolonged PR interval. And that's the case. It's no fluid in the lungs. It's, it means the, the surrounding portion of the heart, yeah, this is the heart. The wall is thickened. It's from all the inflammation. So this is the wall of the heart. All this pericardium is thickened. So when you take a deep breath, you can, it, it hurts. You get pain, but this pain will be relieved when you lean forward. When you lean forward, this pain will be relieved. It's not an infection, it's just inflammation around the heart. So that is pericarditis, inflammatory pericarditis. And they have friction rub. And then on the EKG, you see this diffuse ST elevation, PR interval. And then you will get this pain, chest pain, relieved by leaning forward, by leaning forward. This is concept cardiology. You see, I'm taking you into cardiology. Um, and therefore, if you see that, what is your priority function for this when you see pericarditis, chest pain relieved by leaning forward, it's not your priority. What is your priority for a pericarditis patient? I got to clean this. What is your priority? for pericard uh, pericarditis patient. I've taken you to now cardiology. I uh, know I can take you everywhere. Nobody can do that to you, right? This is because this is like medicine is supposed to connect, right? This is pericarditis, pericarditis. And they, what is my priority for this? I'm looking for what? What am I looking for? narrow pulse pressure, right? I'm looking for JVD. I'm looking for muffled heart sound, right? I'm looking for hypotension. I'm looking for pulses, para toxical. This is what we call tamponade. I'm looking for tamponade features of pericarditis. That's my priority. And that is the way to recognize it. This is my priority. In terms, if this patient develops pericarditis, that's what you're going to see. You see? So now we have pericarditis. The only thing we can do for this patient is what? If we have pericarditis with all this thickening, what is your medication of choice? Colchicin, right? You can give them endomethacin or any NSAID should be fine. But you can give them some anti-inflammatory, colchicin, endomethacin uh, to take care of that, right? So that's one of the things you should worry about. Now, before I leave, let me just take you somewhere else now. Pericarditis. 
the same kid, okay, same kid. Okay, he came back two weeks. Now he has T college hearing. After the strep infection, you don't take the antibiotic, T college hearing. He has edema. Okay. He has um and then hypertension and headache. This is not good. Now he has T college during edema, hypertension, and headache. What has happened to the kid? What has happened to the kid now? We have a bad problem now. He has developed what? He gets strep infection, never get treated, and develop T college urine, right? T college urine, edema, hypertension, and headache. What do you call this? And what do you call it? You don't have to memorize. This is what I tell people all the time. Even if you don't know, it give you, you can think about it. T calidurin has to do something with your kidney, okay? And what is the problem? It happened suddenly, so acute problem. So I know this is an acute, acute problem. When did it happen? Post, after what? Strep, infection, right? Romelolo, nephritis. This is what it means. Acute post strep glomerulonephritis. You don't have to memorize. Any times you have urine problem and you're bleeding, it's related to your kidney. It's just happening acutely. It's post strep infection and glomerulonephritis. Have you heard this before? You see these questions on uh, prioritization all the time. Kid with tick allergy, yeah. This is post strep glomerulonephritis. You can see how strep infection, there's so many topics they can get from it. You can get all these things I've taken you. Post strep glomerulonephritis and what has happened? Bad problem. What is the priority? Is it tick allergy? Is it edema? Is it hypertension or headache? It's hypertension. When the kid has hypertension, we have a problem. So when they give you a question, you say, what is the priority function for the nurse in post strep glomerular Fridays? Think about hypertension. This is going to, if you see that, that's number one. You want to prevent that as much as possible to prevent um, kidney problem. So that's what you have to worry about. After all this has happened to the kid, the doctor said, no, we've had enough. You had strep infection, it wasn't taking. You develop a tonsillar abscess. We drain it, you were not paying attention. You did not take the antibiotic, you develop uh, rheumatic fever. And then you came back with uh, post-strep glomerulonephritis. What are I going to do for you? Well, I'm going to whack out the, your tonsil. So tonsil is coming out. So we decided to do tonsillectomy. And after tonsillectomy, these are the things you got to tell the mother to watch for. Priority, okay? No contact spots for 14 days. Okay? No excessive swallowing. No clearing of your throat. Okay. Stay on clear liquid dye and advanced as lady. This is your priority. This is bleeding. So if you see a question, somebody has tonsillectomy and they they involve in contact sports, 13 days is, is a priority. You got to intervene, exactly 14 days. You should not be doing excessive swallowing, right? You should not be what? Clearing your throat, okay? 
Um, if you excessive swallowing, that means you you drinking blood. You just swallowing blood. Okay. Um, by clear liquid diet, and this is fine. But these are all bleeding problem, and this is what I call the B sharp moment of tonsillectomy. It's a B sharp moment. The bleeding is right here. Shock and sepsis. So this is it. A dark and close way of connecting the dot. I've connected all the dot for you. One problem, we went through diagnosis of Christmas, muffle and tonsillar abscess, rheumatic fever, and then post-trep glomerulonephritis, primary carditis, and we back to tonsillectomy, what you need to do when you see that. Okay, guys? And so if you want to learn more, like I told you, there's a class coming up. This is where to register. Check out that time class if you've not subscribed and then watch some free videos or you can join the membership. But I will make the end class easy for you, manageable as much as possible so that it makes sense. Okay. But if you watch any video, videos, then you can, you can make sense out of it. Ask yourself why. Anyway, good luck and take care of yourself. I know these videos doesn't get thousands of views, but if they does, you see, like people will be passing these exams. You need these things like that to be able to understand the anklets as much as possible to make you comfortable. So I'll see you guys later. Best of luck.